you guys. This uh, place has been empty a long time. It's so good to see your faces, even if they are completely covered. Mm -hmm. It's just a blessing to be here. Uh, got a little bit of housekeeping to take care of, so a little bit of um, rules, I guess, housekeeping rules that we have to abide by uh, during this time. So I'll just read through them very quickly. Uh, you guys are quick learners. I think you've already picked up pretty much everything we got to do around here, but and you've already been experiencing it. But we do have a little traffic flow thing here. So as you see, you just come up the middle when you come in, and when you go out, just go out the sides, and that way you can kind of see each other and keep that social distance as you go out. Um, of course, you're wearing the face covering, which allows me not to when I'm preaching, which is awesome, and I appreciate that. We can have, uh, I'll get to the speak, or the singing thing here in just a minute. Um, also, if you have a medical reason not to wear it, by all means, take it off. Um, you know, that's completely uh, legitimate. But, um, and of course, kids don't have to wear it. Uh, this is a tough one. No hugs or handshakes, but I think we get that. Uh, if, if, um, if kids get a little bit anxious, it's okay. And if you want to take them out, we do still have the uh, overflow room, but it can only be one family at a time. So uh, first come, first serve on that one. And um, also the bathrooms, got a little one in, one out um, uh, policy in place there. So if there's someone using the bathroom, just wait till they come out and then you can use it. But that does not apply, obviously, to families. The families can eat all pile in there. That's okay. I mean, it's still male and female, but you know. <laughs> also, please, I'm stating the obvious. Um, of course, please refrain from saying. Um, but I think humming is probably okay if you like to do that. I'm going to, um, I'll go ahead and sing the hymns. And you can take your hymn books and just follow along and read the words. And sometimes that's a really nice way to really reflect on the message of the song anyway. So why don't we uh, start out with hymn number 434. And please you can remain seated while we do this if you're not actually singing. And um, I'll do my best to crack up here while I'm singing. And... We'll go through Revive Us Again, 434. Revive Us Again. Coming up, 
and he'll be reading uh, Psalm 149 and 150 if you want to start making your way over there in your Bibles. And uh, Arnold, when you do, and you miss one of them now, uh, when you do uh, finish and uh, pray in the service, do pray, uh, or ask that you would pray for the Chain family. Understand that they uh, should be back now, right? Anybody know? Anybody heard? All right. If not, they're very close to being back here. And so just pray for them because I know they're going to be really jet lagged. And also, uh, pray for Brother Matt. He was uh, with us on our 9 o'clock Sunday school call, which was really neat. And he got up to be with us. He was at 3 o'clock there in Texas. So he got there to be with us, and I thought that was pretty impressive. So uh, more announcements to come here uh, after Brother Arnold reads to us from Psalm 149. Yes, dear? Can't hear you. Marin. Marin's mom. Okay. Remember Marin's mom as well. Thank you. Okay. All right. Keep coming, Arnold. It's hard to hear me the best of times without the sun, so I'll take it off so you can actually hear me. Right, Psalm 149. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the temple and heart. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people, who would beautify the meek for salvation. Let the saints be joyful in joy, let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high places of God be in their mouths, be in their mouth, and the two-edged sword in their hand, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment of Bristol. This honour have all, this, all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this uh, momentous day for us where we can come out and, and have a service after so many months of part. And Lord, we pray that you would meet, meet with us at the this morning. We pray for Pastor as he brings the word, Lord, that you would fill him and uh, that our hearts would be just ready and receptive to the message that you have for us this morning. And Lord, we just uh, pray for those that couldn't make it out this morning. Think of Brother Dave with his shoulder and we just pray, Lord, that you give him healing and comfort. We also pray, dear Father, for... Um, to Shane's Lord, if we don't know exactly where they're at right now, but if they are on their way back, we pray for a safe journey. If, if they are back, pray for um, quick recovery from the jet lag and for them to be with us at the next available moment. We also pray for the nap, dear Lord, as he um, acclimatizes to a uh, new life. Um, we just pray, Lord, that you would bless him today and all days. And please, uh, this, this morning, Lord, I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will be lifted up in our service. And lastly, Lord, but not least, we pray for Mary's mother, who is going through a difficult time right now, Lord. There's many questions, not many answers, but we pray, Lord, that as a great physician, you would uh, get to the bottom of what the problem is. You provide comfort for the whole family and um, a quick recovery from whatever it is that's causing the problems. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. A few announcements this morning. Of course, uh, our in-person uh, services will be going on like this uh, until the government has another change uh, takes place. So uh, our Sunday evening at 6.30, our Wednesday evening at 6.30 will still both be online uh, via the Zoom call. And also Sunday school, as it was this morning, will be at 9 o'clock to afford people the opportunity to do that at home and then come here to church at 11. Uh, also, the morning service... Uh, we'll be recording. In fact, Jared, would you please, once the announcements are done, actually, yeah, once the announcements are done, you can go ahead and start the camera. Um, they will be recorded. We'll post them up to Zoom every Sunday afternoon. 
And uh, of course, I'll, I'll just send an email out to everybody with it, just so that you know um, that we have it. If I if I've been sending emails out, and you've been not getting them because everybody in here I've been sending to. Um, just get with me, maybe give me a different email or something, and we'll get that to you. Um, the rest of the um, services I'll record uh, via the cloud on Zoom. So what you will get, if you want it, I'll just send individuals. Um, you know, just let me know. Um, if you want it like every time, just let me know. Recurring thing, or if you just want a one-off or something, let me know and I'll do it. Uh, what I'll do is just send you the link, and you will go to the Zoom um, it's just a link right to it. You'll get the raw, unedited version. You'll get exactly what we got in Sunday school. So you may hear Arnold and me talking before everybody shows up or something like that. But you'll get the, the raw, unedited thing. So uh, it might be good for a laugh, too. So if you want to uh, uh, have any of those recordings, just let me know. I'll be happy to email you the links for them. Um, following the service, uh, please, if you want to stick around and fellowship and talk a little bit, Please kind of make your way outside. It's a nice day today, so we're very fortunate with that. Uh, but by all means, you can do that. You can stick around as long as you like. Uh, do keep an eye on the kids. Uh, kids are great at getting around chairs and things like little barricades we set up. They can do it. So just keep an eye on them. The idea there is to minimize the area that we are in so that we don't have to sanitize and clean and everything, all those areas. This just keeps it a little bit more control in this the way we've got it right now um, and obviously no coffee and refreshments afterwards so uh, that, that'll come eventually but uh, that's it for the announcements the, you know does anybody have any questions just curious I mean we can, we're all family here if anybody has any questions about what's going on here or anything uh, and if if you don't want to do it right now too if you have a question you want to ask please ask me later um, happy to give you any information I've got. Also, the risk assessment I, that I alluded to in the emails and stuff, I do have the full risk assessment if you want to see it. And that's in the office. And uh, that was fun. That took me a couple of days. <laughs> that was a real blast. But it was good. I got the point. I, I saw what they were after. You know, and I think we are in good conscience abiding by what the government wants us to do. So in that, we can be really happy. In that, also is a great testimony should anybody else come in here to see that we're doing this because I know for us you know we could say well we've all bumped into each other at one point or another you know and we could just skip the mask thing but we're not we're doing we're doing the right thing and I, and I think that's really good so I commend you guys and really appreciate that all right we're gonna do another hymn now uh, 318 318 I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary 318 
We don't have an offering per se, because we've been doing that one line. But if you do, uh, there will be, uh, if you have cash or check, um, and also when we have visitors, if they have a visitor's card, there is a plate at the back, so feel free on the way out to just drop um, any cash or check in there if you'd like to. And uh, as I said, you know, praise the Lord for you guys doing a lot of this while it's really helpful. Um, okay, so that being said, if you do, please, you can, uh, this is special for us. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits, 
and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king, sorry, then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captain, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you, you, you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the per people heard the sound of the cornet, flutes, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. And thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man shall hear, that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, but psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should, should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, vault, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye shall, or ye fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If so, be our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats and their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, in, or fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the kings, counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who, had, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this account of an amazing truth, an amazing story. And Father, I pray that we would get the finer points of it today. I pray that you would speak to our hearts. Thank you so much, Lord, for each person who has come today. And I pray that they would walk away with a blessing. And I pray, Father, that you would encourage our church. I pray, pray that you would grow our church. But now, Lord, we want to speak your word. And I pray that you, above all, would be glorified. And that, Father, we would be edified. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. This is a story that most of us are very acquainted with. If you've ever been to Sunday school or vacation Bible school, you know this story. This is one of those ones you hear over and over. And I thought, you know, hey, if we're going to have some kids in the, in the auditorium with us, you know, maybe we'll do some of these because they are just chock full of great truths and great things to live by. Now, those times when we were little, those are the first times we ever heard about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, probably. And back then, we were amazed by the courage that they had, the determination to do what God would have them to do, and the way that God protected them. It was, it was just mind-boggling. You know, it was one of those things that you said, they wouldn't even make a story out of this and, and try and get away with it because it's just too fantastic. And yet, here's God bringing glory upon himself by doing it. We, we saw that. And then we learned about kings who held the power of life and death in their hands. And then we grew up. Then we grew up. And hopefully, when we did, we came to know the Lord personally. We started to experience the pressures of the world, the flesh, the devil. All of that stuff started to have an influence in our lives. And we came to this realization that this Christianity thing is not going to be an easy road. But then again, I would contend that life is not an easy road. And I don't think I could stand it. I probably wouldn't be here today if I hadn't had Christ. So that's, that's just my opinion. But we find ourselves, though, at odds with the world all the time. We find ourselves at odds with the devil and all the things that he wants. And we find ourselves at odds with ourselves, with our flesh, and all of its crazy desires and, and wants. Now, with all the conflict, there comes temptation. And that temptation is to conform, to give in, and just let the influences run their course with us. And that's what a lot of so-called Christians do today, unfortunately. We see churches and families and individuals who just plain sell out to the world. That's why this story, the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is so pertinent today. It's why it has a deep meaning to us and it is so important to get. They, these men, they teach us something very valuable. It's possible to be completely sold out for God. In the worst of circumstances, it is possible to be an absolute you know, bastion of determination for the Lord and to stand for Him, despite certain death before you. It is possible to be on fire for God in the best of ways. <laughs> where there is real faith in Jesus Christ, just like where there is smoke, there is fire. Our enemies may try to extinguish that fire, but in the Lord's strength, we can stand. These verses tell us how. First, in the first seven verses, I'm going to take these kind of in chunks, because it's a lot of scripture here. But in the first seven verses, it talks about being different. Being different. A little context here. Evidently, Nebuchadnezzar wasn't content with Daniel's interpretation from the previous chapter. And so, 
He wanted to establish his kingdom forever. So he made, makes this image of gold. Pretty cool. Solid gold image. But not so cool. He decreed that he was a god. And that all people would bow down to him. And those who didn't were sentenced to immediate death by fiery furnace. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were on the horns of a dilemma. They were in a quandary. They were in all those bad places that you can name and all the cool ways you can say them. They were in a bad state because they had three areas of temptation that immediately confronted them. And by the way, those same temptations face us today. First, they, were, they had to look out for personal interest, or at least they were tempted to, I'm thinking. There was a temptation to look after self and what you thought was important. And they may have been tempted to say, after all, you know, this may be something that um, will affect uh, the people here. You know, we, we have to look out for the people that we have this influence over. We have to uh, care for the other people. You know, just rationalize a little bit. You know, who knows what we could accomplish for the Lord? I mean, honestly. But if we get ourselves killed, you know, that's a moot point. Okay, so they, they could look out for their personal interests with some reason even. They could also be tempted to do it to avoid the persecution. There was a temptation like everybody else. Anyone who refused to bow was going to be burned. There was no question. And yet, nobody relishes that thought, I'm sure. I think that'd be a hideous way to go, especially when you see it coming. I mean, that, that's always the worst part of it, you know, any kind of death like that. It's seeing it happen, because obviously when it's happened, you know. But they may have been tempted to say something like, isn't it better to be a living coward than a dead hero? I contend that it's not, because then you've got to try and live with yourself. And a lot of people like that don't live very long. Now, besides, I fired. It does look kind of painful. I don't know if that would be a great way to go, but... Surely God doesn't intend his children to suffer like this. You know, these are the kind of thoughts, I'm thinking, that might go through their minds. And there's also a temptation to just conform. Just be like everybody else. I mean, they're all bowing down. They're not going to see us. You know, obviously, they, you know, if we just bow down. But then again, you have to think, well, how did they see you not bowing down? Somebody must have been looking around. Reminds me of Juliet when she used to pray in Sunday school. She'd, like, look around and stuff. I'd hear about it. But anyway, we digress. Uh, but what's it going to hurt? What's it going to hurt if we just bow down? I'll just bow on the outside, but not on the inside. Heard that one a few times. But I know these things that I've said, they're just pure speculation, really, on my part. But don't we think just like that? You know, I know that those things would have been running through my mind. I would have been looking for the exit. I would have been trying to find that place where I could go to get out of what I knew was certain death. We tend to seek what's best for self in any given situation. And while that may be true, if we want to impact the world for God, then we've got to be different. Notice how we are different, by the way. There are um, a few little different things here. One of them is that we need to be separated. We need to be separated. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were willing to be separated. They were willing to be different. There aren't too many individualists today. A lot of people want to go along with the group. And it's never been a really good way to go. You know, but we need to be individualists. We need to think today. You know, nobody wants to be called weird. I get that. Nobody wants to be called a peculiar people. You know, we laugh about that and everything, but nobody really wants to be looked at as odd, not fitting in. That's why people follow fads. That's why everybody learns the newest terms and all the hip expressions. We want to be in, and we don't want to be different. Nobody wants to be different, and but that's what the Lord has called us to be. 2 Corinthians 6.17 tells us, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. God wants his people to look different, to think different, to act different, to talk different, to walk different. He wants to be us to be different from the world around us, and he wants us to be separated. In fact, he wants us to stand out so much 
that we draw the world to Him. Now, God really does want us to be that peculiar people, as mentioned in Titus 2.4. He wants us to be separated. He also wants us to take a stand. A stand. And while everybody else is bowing before this, this silly idol that Nebuchadnezzar made, Shadrach and Amit and Meshach and Abednego are standing. They're just standing. You could say, well, why not just, just bow? Just bow and it'd be okay. They made up their minds. They weren't going to bow. They weren't going to bow. And they didn't. And it's a good example for us today. If something is wrong, no matter who is for it, it's still wrong. You're not going to convince me, I'm going to get a little political here, but you're not going to convince me that abortion is right in any way. Wrong is wrong. I don't care how many votes you get. It's wrong. It's sin. All right, no politics. Still wrong, though. We need to determine that we will take a stand for that which is right. That's God's call for us in Ephesians 6.13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. To stand. It's really all He's calling us to do, to stand. We need to rash or realize there are still things that are worth standing for, and there are still things that are worth standing against. We need to be different, and we need to be determined. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow, people couldn't wait to go run and tell the king, Oh boy, we finally got it on these goody two shoes. We're going to get these guys. And they run and they tell the king. And as a result, they're brought in. Now the king likes them. He's a little bit, whoa, what, what, why is this? So he gives them their second chance. Just as they were determined to stand, to be different before the crowd, they had to be the same way in front of the authority. They had to be the same in front of the king. And despite all of what was said in these verses, uh, this is in verses 8 to 12, if you're kind of following along a little bit. But in these verses, Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego are accused of being enemies of the king. And although they did not worship the king's image, nothing could be further from the truth, they did faithfully serve the king. And the king knew it. However, his command was his command. But his command was contrary to God's command. And so they did God's command. When you've had enough of this world, when you've taken just the last dose of garbage they throw at you, and you finally decide to make your stand for God, there's going to be trouble. There are, there's going to be trials. You're going to be tested. You're going to be put through it. 2 Timothy 3.12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. The devil's coming after you when you make your stand. But you know what? Make your stand. Make your stand, because that is where life is. That is where real truth is. That is where God is. That's where I want to be. When they rise up against you, be determined. Stand for Jesus. And when the time came, Jesus stood for us. In spite of all the insinuation, they stood. In spite of interrogation, Nebuchadnezzar was a sly guy. He offers them a plan he, uh, to get out of this problem. He gives them an opportunity that will result in saving their lives. And still, they're determined to stand for God. And there will be times when the world will tighten the screws on you, see if you'll squirm just because you're different than they are. But you know, I submit there is no reason to be ashamed of what we are. No reason to be ashamed of who we are. And definitely no reason to be ashamed of to whom we belong. The advice Peter gave it some 2,000 years ago, still valid today. 1 Peter 3, 15 and 16. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you of your good in conversation with Christ. So, even the world doesn't understand, and when they don't, you still be determined, and you stand for God. Now, in these verses uh, between 15 and 18 now, 
Nebuchadnezzar reminds them that they face terrible deaths at his hands. He's also very quick to point out that uh, your God's not going to save you. I don't believe that one for one second he's going to save you. He's trying to intimidate them. He's trying to make them doubt. He's trying to make them bow before his idol. But look at how they respond to his threats. And I love this. They're basically saying, um, not our problem there, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. We're, uh, we're out of this, really. Whether we live or die is entirely upon the will of God. It is, it is not in your hands. We are the Lord's. And he will look after us. And what we do not want to miss is the truth of what Nebuchadnezzar threw at them. They, st they stood their ground. They stood their ground no matter what he did. Now, do you want to get on fire for God today? That, that's the question. Do you want to get on fire for God? You've got to be different. And you've got to be determined. And then you will be delivered. In verses 19 through 30 now, as we get to the last part of the message here. Uh, in 19 through 23, first, you'll be delivered from the flames. You see, Nebuchadnezzar was so angry, he order, ordered the furnace to be hotter than it had ever been. He order, ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be bound in the clothes that they're wearing, and he gets the strongest soldiers he's got to drag them up there and throw them in, and they get burned up in the process. The soldiers don't even, don't even make it as far as, the, as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But they fall in, bound into the fire. And then in verses 24 through 25, something amazing happens. They get delivered in the flames. Now, why didn't the Lord spare them from the fire? Man, I'll tell you, well, I'll tell you why. We wouldn't have this fantastic story if he did. And the reason we have this fantastic story is it brings him more glory. That's what it's all about. That's why he puts us in these precarious positions sometimes. When we get to these places where we think, that's impossible. Well, it is impossible for me. But when God does it, he gets the glory. And you know it. And it's our responsibility. When he does something great in our lives, man, let people know. Hey, God did this in my life. No way I could have done it. But he did it. That's how he gets his glory. And that's why he allowed them, I believe, to be in this fire. But while they were there, just like us, he met them there. He met them in the fire. This is tremendous. This is something that we need to know. When we're in the middle of the fire, so is he. You're not there alone. He is there. When I saw Dave walk in the back today, I said to myself, God's with him in the fire. He's been having a hard, hard time lately. Let me pray for Brother Dave. And yet he, I know it wasn't easy. He dragged himself out here to church. I praise the Lord for that. I'm not trying to build you up or anything, Dave. I'm just saying praise the Lord for what he has done. And just thank him for that. Glad you're here. So, the Lord meets them in the flames. The Lord protects them there. And he teaches Nebuchadnezzar a valuable lesson about who is God. They walked around in that fire, unbound, unburned. You see... God may let you go into the fire, but you're not going by yourself. You can rest on this promise from Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's God's word. You can trust that. He didn't keep them from the fire. He kept them through the fire. And what is meant for our destruction, God means for good and for his glory. By the way, the fourth man in that fire is still and then in verses 26 and 27, he's delivered from the flames. Nebuchadnezzar calls them out of the fire and sees that they hadn't been burned. They didn't even smell like smoke. I know a little bit about fires. Dave makes some big ones out back here sometimes. And I'm here to tell you, if you're anywhere near it, if you're not even near it, if you're in the building, you walk away smelling like smoke. And these guys were in that fire, and they came out... And they're not smelling of smoke at all. In fact, they're not, their hairs on their hands are not even burnt. Nothing is singed. Here's the point. God may let you go through the fire. And if he does, you won't go alone. He'll go with you. And in the end, he'll bring you out again. And if he brings us out, even if we die in that furnace, we win either way, don't we? 
We know this. Philippians 1.21. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So after Nebuchadnezzar gets them out of the furnace, he makes a proclamation to honor God. He's probably scared. And he's figured, I better honor God, or something bad's going to happen to me. I may end up in that furnace. So, God is honored. And he even promotes Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When we go through the fire with Jesus, we will, he will be honored, and we will grow as a result. And in that fire, we will see Jesus in a little bit different way. I just, I tried to put myself in their position. There you are, in that fire, and the first thing you think is, there's no pain. What's going on here? And then, why can I even see in here? You know, all these things would go through my mind, and then you see Jesus. And he's not standing there like, oh, look what I can do. No. He's standing there. And I can imagine the most kind, loving smile. When I think about that, when I cast that my mind on that, the Lord allows me to muse on these things sometimes. I, I get overcome with just how precious our relationship is with Him. He is so good to us. And when we're in our fire, it doesn't matter what fire you're in. Find Him. He's there. Turn around. He might be right behind you. He's there with you. Find Him. Call on His name. He'll come. He will be more precious and we will be more determined than ever to be different from the world around us and take our stand for Him despite the consequences we face. We just understand how much He really does love us. So let's face it today. If, if we're honest, just brutally honest, we can we back down a lot instead of facing the fire. And if that's you, like it's been me, we can come to the Lord today. We can get forgiven of that. We don't have to live there. We can get forgiven and move on. Then you can take your stand with Him. Others might be in the fire right now. Know that Jesus is with you right now. He is with you. Have you seen Him there? If you need to find Him, now is the time to come to Him. He wants to be with you. Draw nigh unto the Lord and He'll draw nigh unto you. Others of you are like Nebuchadnezzar, maybe. More like him than the three Hebrews. And by that I mean maybe you only have an acquaintance with God. Maybe you don't know Him in a saving relationship. But today you can. Today you just need to meet with Him. You know, wherever this message has found you today, you need to deal with what the Lord has showed you. Just come before Him. He'll smile at you with the most loving smile. He will not be accusatory. He will just simply say, I forgive you when you ask Him to. When you bring that sin, whatever it might be you bring it to Him, I'll forgive you. Let's go ahead and take our stand now. He just wants to get you right on the right path so that you can get back where you need to be. There is hope and there is help to be found in Christ. So will you come? what he's calling you to come for. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes for a moment. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this time. Pray that you would bless this time of invitation. It is so, so good to be in your house once again. And I pray, Father, that you would move in a special way. I pray that your children here, Lord, who came out despite this inconvenience of a problem. We have to wear masks and do various things and stay distanced, and yet we don't stay distanced from you. You're right next to us. And I pray, Father, that you would bless these folks, Lord. Bless this family we have here. Father, if there's a need, I pray you would meet it. I pray that you would work in hearts individually. And Father, if someone here isn't saved, I pray that today they would just come forth and say, Pastor, I'd like to be saved today. I would love to show them in the Bible how they could be saved. So, Father, whatever the need, I pray that folks would respond as we have our invitation now. Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go ahead and bow our stand. We'll bow our heads, close our eyes. And if you'd like to come, the altar is open. Please avail yourself. It's been a long time. Maybe you just need to come.
come and say, Lord, I love you. Whatever the need, don't bring it. And he will meet you here.